I know what you're saying. I was wondering if you could call the Stephen Bushman attorney that we that we use to do the you know our ordinance. What do you call it? The resolution, not the resolution, but the whole. Oh, the territory. The territory agreement. Yes. Anyway, they're they're very familiar with township law, and I Stephen Bushman retired, but there's a really knowledgeable young person in Reno right now that could probably tell you maybe what we need to do. Maybe we'll send him an email. And I don't think that's your job, but you know. So we're all in agreement if we can work out. Is this correct or no? In agreement to let the animal control have it if we can work it out to get the title changed and all that, correct? Yeah. But if there's anybody here that wants it on your lot. Would it be simpler just to give it to animal control instead of a non-profit? Or how, I don't know how that works. Well, I'm not sure it is. No, they don't want it under the sheriff's department because no. Okay. I think it's a hassle, but if that's not the way that's going to work. The sheriff's department, the animal control doesn't have its own. It's under the rest of. So you have to form a non-profit for it. Yeah, it would be totally separate. So if I was, if it was under the sheriff's department, I wouldn't have the ability to go to help other places. Like, not at a whim. Is there another humane society that is already a not-for-profit? There are humane societies that are all, they're all non-profit. But I'm talking to them. I asked the same, I asked the same question. She said, we have a board. When you do that, you have boards you have to go through and all these hoops you have to jump through. So that's why it was best to do it this way. If we can get it away from all the red tape and boards, we can do it on our own. If you establish a 501c3, you're going to establish a board. Yes. That, you know, y'all. I think what she's saying is currently her church is willing to initiate the program or initiate the project, right? And then give her time to establish her own. Yes. But you would establish a 501 with a board. Correct. Eventually. Yes. Do we need a motion to okay this so that she can proceed? We don't? I mean, according to? I'll make a motion that we contact the attorney. I didn't know you put it on hold. I don't think it's a decision that it has to be made tonight. Okay. And that's fine, too. But I think you find out the correct information before you make a move. And I could get an answer by next month. Okay. Let's back off. Wait. Okay. If we can find out the right way to do it, then I want to proceed. So where are we going here? I mean, Marsha won the motion, but that's going to cost you money to make this contact state board. Well, it's just an email. I don't think it's actually going to cost you money. Well, if Jeremy wants to make contact with Marsha, then I'll send him an email. Yeah, I would do that. Because ours, I don't touch it. I don't have any questions. If the state board tells us that they don't make legal decisions, then we can do it to our legal decision. If they give you the answer. I've got to tell you what the tenant says. Right. But if they tell us what the answer is, then you don't have to go through the whole thing. So we're all in agreement to do it if we can get everything worked out. Is that correct? Can you stop by the office? I will give you Susan Borden or Todd Cogwell's number, so you need to introduce yourself to them anyway. So you call down and get your answer. If they're not going to give you other than telling you what the code is, then you can proceed. And I think the board agrees with that. We've got to go through. Yeah, all the steps. Actually, the motion would be after we get our answer. I know. I think they're just going to talk to them. Yeah, they're 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 going to talk to them. Yeah, they're
them eating in normal, but it's budget and all that, so. Just if there's public comment or questions. Ready? All right. Rack? Yeah, I'd like to. I'm sure this is before probably any of your times other than maybe Leanne was on involved with the fire department at that time. <laughs> but, you were younger or earlier now. Okay. That, that but, left her girl real quick, didn't it? Yeah. But back in July of nineteen eighty eight, we had a grass fire at Anderson. Yes. And Alan Gray uh, was running the pumper and the truck started creeping forward and he tried he jumped up into the truck to try and take it out of gear and it went by the tanker and it crushed his right foot. Uh, the insurance paid all of his hospital bills and everything. But I take him for surgeries and uh, he's he's diabetic also. But his first surgery they took a bone out of the bottom of his foot that it got infected and he has absolutely no feeling in that foot. I take him and see him lance it, cut it, bleeding, and he'll tell the doctor, he, uh, you don't need to numb it. He said, I can't feel it if it don't bother you. I don't know if <clears throat> he's 62 years old now. And the day before that, his foot was fine. He's been crippled ever since, and he, I didn't even tell him I was coming to talk to anybody about it. But I don't know if there's any kind of a pension that maybe he could get somewhat of a pension from it now that it's given him a lot of trouble. He's lost his big toe, next to the big toe. His last surgery was three weeks ago, and his doctor told him that she it was kind of up in the air whether to go ahead and take the rest of his toes at that time or not. If it happened today, they put a, probably would have put pins and metal and everything in there, but the way it was in 1988, uh, they just, the bones are floating around in there. And so, you know, I don't know if anything can be done, but, and Bill Shock said he asked him the next day if, you know, if he wanted to apply for any kind of disability. Well, he was still in shock. He said no. So. Well, I, like I said, I don't know how you would have applied for disability when you were a volunteer fireman back then. And back then, you received a clothing and gas line. Yeah. You didn't get a raise. Yeah. So, um, and you. <coughs> You also have this fire department because it's always been volunteer has never paid into the per fire fund, so you have no recourse there. Um, it, it's a shame more wasn't probably done with the insurance at the time. Um, I, we can check into it, but I I really don't see an avenue open for, for you unless there's something that I'm not aware. Of. I, the IBFA might be a place to check that. I don't know if they have any kind of phone or anything like that, but that's a possibility. You know, the IBFA is yeah. I think back in 88. So yeah. That might be a place to Yeah, I, I, I'm sure he was a member of that time. I was sure too, so. Yeah, but no, he might check that again. Yeah, how long he was on the fire department? 17 years. 17 years? Yeah. So I would um, just mention that.
service, but if somebody were to get hurt or report an injury now, even if it's a minor, seemingly minor injury, mm -hmm. we have them fill out the you know, initial report of injury, and I tell them it doesn't go anywhere, but if in two days it's still hurt, we have the documentation, and then that's what makes you eligible yes. for those other things. Yeah. So it's really dependent on what the leadership does at the time to make sure they capture the right paperwork. Again, most of them that we get from the file and never seen again because they recovered from their injury. In that situation, however, that would have been beneficial if it was even an option. Then. But um, like Leanne said, I don't know if there's anything that we could do at this point, but uh, the IBFA, the Indiana Volunteer Firefighters yeah. Association, might have some different case law or some you know, precedence that's been set somewhere. Well, like I say, I, I haven't even mentioned it to him, mm -hmm. but I just, you know, like, like I say, I've taken him for different surgeries and when he can't drive. Of course, right now he's got a big boot on his foot and he can't even. So, yeah. You know. I'll tell you, there is a struggle, even though it's beneficial for the firemen to fill out those or report their injuries. You struggle to get them to do it because you bent your arm the wrong way and it's sore and they're like, I'm fine, it'll be fine tomorrow. Just fill out the form because you might not be fine tomorrow. You know, so it's tough even though it one hundred percent benefits the firemen to get them to even fill it out. So uh, it's just I would say moving forward that anybody in some type of leadership role if they report an injury to you do your best to document it because no one knows that many years later how it could really affect your life. Well, Bill and me talked about it, said probably if he'd been wearing his fire boots, it probably would have took the strut off because the steel toe and the plate at the bottom of the boot probably would have cut it off. But it was close to him amputating it then. By just, you know, if, if there's anything that can be done, you know, I appreciate it. Like I say, I've, I've not mentioned it to him, then he won't be disappointed if nothing can be done. But, you know, he's, appreciate it, it, it happened at a fire, so. Appreciate your presentment. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for your time. Yep, thank you. We'll see you in the morning, you about to All right. Oh, yeah. Last name of this Sense gentleman, of Rex. Gray. Alan Gray. Gray, G R A. Yes, G R A Y. Thank you. Rex, okay. since the food truck will be here tomorrow, I'll be for coffee because I have to. Not get in line, but I have to help pass out. <laughs> What's they, they all tease me about going up there and getting me free food. Really, I'm helping pass out. Are you going to run off? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have anything at all? I, mean, I, I, I will. <laughs> now this is on water. I, I come home the other day, she called me, Erica did, and I tried to be home a little bit. The Peters boys used my shop. They're on the Cutler Fire Department. My wife looks out the window, she said, for God's sakes, what's he done now? The sheriff's out there. <laughs> so I, I was in trouble, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Don't put that in the paper. I won't, but it, but it is on the internet. Debbie, I'm going to shoot you. All right, nothing else I consider the meeting adjourned, okay? Do you need a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll come right back. First and second. I was blowing off in between. Thank you. I will. I'll stay with Thank you for all your extra time today. Thank you. Yeah, they've got a girl, they've got a girl.